respected Anil Agarwal, President of the Federation, respected Mila Jaydev, Senior Vice President, respected Naresh Chandra Gilly, Chairman of Corporate Laws and IBC Committee, who always asked me to be present in most of the corporate law meetings. Thank you. Respected speakers of the day and respected Suresh Kumar Singhal, Veena Madam, Tasni Madam, and all other dignitaries on the days or of the days and members of the Federation who are present in the meeting and all other persons or uh, business magnates of Telangana who are present in the webinar. Good morning to all. And thank you, Ritesh, for the nice introduction Being as roc for the last three years and probably this may be my last year as registrar of companies for the state of telangana on the outset i thank the federation for the all cooperation and uh, keeping me informed of the latest changes which are happening and uh, always asking me to participate in major meetings so that i will also get in reached about Outset, I thank all the from office spirits of the Federation of Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industry for inviting me. And I'm very happy when we discuss CARO and uh, recent amendments in the company set. I sincerely hope the eminent speakers of the day will guide us in the practical aspects of the compliance of CARO. I have used this platform earlier also to communicate the initiatives of the central government for the betterment of the process in MCA 21 and the changes in the company act. So today also I'll be using it for that purpose. Recently, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs have switched to B3, version three of the MCA 21. We started with LLPs, there were some difficulties. Now, almost everything is in place. And one of the major changes made in the B3 version is details of the usage of MCA 20. So far, the designated partners or directors could file all the documents in MCA if they are registered users. For, from the last month, only business users can file documents in B3 version because companies are still following B2 version. You, people may be able to file it, but in B3 version, that is an LLP portal, all registered users cannot use their user IDs to file documents in the MCA 21. Now, we have sent personal emails from the ROC to more than 40,000 designated partners of the LLPs in the state of Telangana, advising them to switch to the business user for filing documents or e-forms in the MCA portal. Now, on successful implementation of LLPs, the ministry is planning to switch nine more e-forms of companies relating to directives, relating to charges, and relating to deposits to the V3 platform. This will happen this month. In the state of Telangana, we have more than 80,000 active companies and have more than one lakh directors. Hence, all the persons who are directors of the companies or designated partners of the LLP, which are incorporated in the state of Telangana, how to enroll themselves as business users to continue to file company documents in NCA portal. So I request the FTCCA to propagate this message, these changes to its members and to the business community so that directors and professionals of companies of this part changing over to the B3 platform. Now let us come to the topic. The annual financial statements are filed by companies in MCA portal. Register of companies, in fact, act as a repository to these documents. All stakeholders like government agencies, enforcement agencies, financial institutions, shareholders, and other investors depend on these documents for taking informed decisions. This ROC is expected to ensure that 
These documents disclose the true and fair view of the state of affairs of that company. The companies are expected to follow the accounting standards prescribed under the Companies Act while disclosing things in the financial statement. It is made mandatory that the account should be audited by a qualified auditor. Hence, auditor has a vital role to play to ensure that the financial statements of these companies, which are kept in the repository of ROCs, disclose a true and fair view or a true picture of company's financial position and follow the accounting standard prescribed. If you see the Companies Act, as per section 143 of the Companies Act, an auditor has the rights of account and vouchers of the company, whether kept at the registered office or any other place. And entitled to seek call for information, which they may consider necessary for the performance of their duties as an auditor. I don't think even the members or the directors have such rights. But as far as the auditor has auditor is concerned, he has got all the rights to go anywhere, registered office or any place, and get the documents or get the information, whichever they find necessary to do the audit. If an auditor qualifies his report, the board is duty bound to di disclose their explanation in the board's report. If it is not done, it is a punishable offense under section 134 of the act. Thus, the auditor has a vital role in maintaining the quality of documents kept by ROC in the MCA registry. We sometimes tell ministry has three eyes not in the form of three eyes, but three eyes. That is inspection, investigation, and inquiry. These are the three eyes, or these are the regulatory tool, tools used by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs to ensure that everything is compliant in respect of a company on the basis of any reported violation or any deviation of the accounting standard reported the ministry can order an inquiry or an inspection or investigation, depending upon the type of violations or deviations reported. And while doing the inquiry, the registrar of companies first see the auditor's report. And in fact, auditors should also be happy that when they audit, they have some reservation on certain things and they report in the auditor's report, but take this into a logical conclusion, somebody should read it. So ROC is supposed to read the qualifications of the auditor and take further action on these matters. And auditing is compulsory. Auditor's report is compulsory for all the companies listed under the company side. CARO is an annexure to the auditor's report. CARO is applicable to certain companies, which will in detail be explained by the speakers. I'm not going to do the details. But I just want to say CARO 2020 is a new format for issue of reporting. And it is to enhance the overall quality of reporting of the company auditors, company rep reporting by the company auditors. CARO 2020 is applicable to all statutory audits commencing from 1st April 2021. That means 31st March 2020-22, that means when you are doing the audit during this period, and when you submit the report in 2020, September 30th, you have to report as per CARO 2020. CARO may not be applicable to small companies and regulated companies and most of the private companies, but for remaining companies which have good turnover and network, they are supposed to report CARO, the thing which I can add. Other things the speakers will explain. In CARO 2020, it requires auditor to report whether records are maintained by the company and whether it disclosed the complete particulars on details, quantity, situation of tangible and intangible assets. Intangible asset was no, not there earlier. Now it is intangible assets also. And if the auditor qualify in the CARO, that it is not done, then immediately ROC will take action 128. 
So this is directly related to section 128. It will result in a prosecution. Similarly, read with that when section 129 says a true and fair should be disclosed in the financial statement. So there will be two violations by reporting one entry in the CARO. Similarly, in 2020 CARO requires an audit report whether investment made guarantees provided security given and terms and condition of grant of all loans and advances in the nature of loans and guarantees provided are not prejudicial to the company's interest. You may initially feel that this is a kind of opinion only. Who will decide? But if you go through 186, there is certain condition when you give a loan where it should carry an interest, not below the bank rate. So if the auditor qualifies it, it will result in violation of 186. And I will tell you, section 186 violation is not compoundable because there is a compulsory imprisonment. This is the seriousness of reporting in Cairo. When you Cairo, if the auditor qualifies one sentence, it will result in compulsory imprisonment of the persons involved in it. And similarly, if the company has given loans to directors or any other person whom the director is interested, Cairo requires auditor to report whether they have made compliance with provisions governing to such loans and investment. A negative report will lead to violation of section 185 and action by the registrar of companies. In case the company accepted deposit or any deemed deposits, what is a deemed deposit? If you take uh, some amount as advance for goods and remain there for more than 365 days, it will be amount to a deposit. The auditors have to report whether the company followed the provision prescribed for accepting the deposit under section 73 to 76 of the Companies Act 2013. If the report says directors have given loan without furnishing a declaration at the time of accept acceptance of money that it is from my own money, even that would result a serious violation involving imprisonment. With respect to CSR, last time we were discussing about CSR. CARO 2020 requires auditor to report whether any company has transferred the unspent, unspent amount to a fund specified under Schedule 7 within a period of six months from the expiry of the financial year. And if any money remains unspent, has been transferred to special account in accordance with provisions of 135 or not. And say, believe me, if the auditor reports that the amount has not been transferred within a time, ROC has to adjudicate the offense and the company has not only to transfer the unspent amount, but has to pay penalty twice the unspent amount. The directors responsible have to pay 10% of the unspent amount of pen as penalty from his own sources. So if the auditor report that the company has failed to transfer 10 lakhs rupees, which remain unspent, it has to spend 30 lakhs as penalty in addition to personal liability of di directors. In short, CARO reporting by auditors has direct implication on the regulator and consequential penal action against the companies and directors. I think with this initial remarks, you will better understand when the speakers tell what is CARO and wh wh what the reporting is. And I take this opportunity to thank the efforts taken by FTCCA to organize this program so that the business community in Telangana should not be penalized due to lack of awareness of changing laws and corporate sector. I once again thank the office bearers of the Federation of Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industry for inviting me. Thank you very much. I just want to add two things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because um, I like the presentation very well. It was very informative um, and, in fact, very useful to me also. <laughs> the one question which you have asked, I didn't interfere because I yeah. could let the flow go. That is whether any negative reporting in Cairo will leads to a violation in the sense that if it is not replied by the board, whether it will be a violation. My feeling is that yes, it will. And my additional feeling is that even if it's a subsidiary company reporting also, they say negative reporting should reflect in the main consolidated report also. So not only the subsidiary company should reply, it should be replied by the so holding company also, that is one thing. It's only personal opinion. Secondly, someone was asking whether I borrow some money from the bank and if I transfer it to a subsidiary company, 
is it okay as per caro it's only reporting but as far as we have to take two sections section 185 is one section another section is 73 under section 73 there is a rule in that rule it says if the money is taken from directors is not exempted it says it is exempted provided a declaration is obtained from the director at the time of giving money each time that it is not from borrowed fund when you say it is borrowed fund exemption has gone so it is no more exempted it is a, it becomes a violation if you are not complying with the rules of all other kind of deposits so money borrowed itself will be a problem then secondly if 185 there is a feeling that if the money is given to only on subsidy it is exempted it's only for only on subsidy there is also a proviso it says that money should be utilized by the only on subsidy for its principal business if it is for um, payment of remuneration to the directors or anything else then that will not be exempted so that all the provisions of 185 will apply to that one and if you go through the 186 also if there is an interest component in it and if the amount is interest is less than the bank rate it will be another violation so if that violation comes it is not compoundable at all it will be a compulsory imprisonment so caro reporting has got its own impact on each point and if you when you talk about cash cash transaction now it is no more relevant because in 297 there was a, a exemption only if it is um, cash transaction now it is no more relevant but the concept of uh, arm length business is still there it says if the business is similar to all other people only it is arm length if you got a petrol pump and you are taking petrol on credit but you are not giving credit to any other thing is not arm length so these are the things which should be noted while reporting in caro that's only that much to add thank you it was very wonderful discussion i liked it and i encourage the chamber to have more such discussion very useful one. definitely definitely sir definitely thanks a lot sir thanks for your input sir we are really <laughs> fortunate to take your input sir thank you sir